hi everyone on facebook live thanks for joining us we're at city gate main point women of faith and um we've been kind of singing and talking about god's faithfulness and i just want to mention coming up saturday march 2nd is main third anniversary celebration at woodcrest um starts at 5 30 doors open at 4 30. Uh, we'll eat at 5 30 and just bring um, a covered dish type of thing to share um, there'll be worship and um, updates on the ministry um, prayer fellowship um, it's always uh, a great time to get together so mark your calendar for that that's men and women um, are all invited uh, so we have that coming up and I don't think I have any other announcements, so I'm going to call our speaker up tonight. It's Robin Martin, and um, I don't know. Some of you know Robin, I guess, already. Yeah. At least one person, right? <laughs> Christina knows everybody, apparently. She was a speaker last week, and she knows Robin. So, um, so a little history. Uh, I've known Robin a long time. Um, were you 10 years old <laughs> when I met you? <laughs> Probably, or nine um, maybe, yeah. Yeah, nine or 10, um, because her sister was and still is um, pretty much my best friend. Um, so when, of course, I'm older, um, I knew Dawn, her sister, and so when I'd go over to Dawn's house to pick her up to go do stuff, Robin was there. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we've known each other a long time, and, and our families are like family. Um, they adopted me, her mom, um, because I don't have brothers and sisters, and Dawn was kind of like my sister, and that now my parents are gone, so her mom and sister invite me and my husband to stuff, like holidays, and it's a real blessing for me, because I don't have that much family, but they, they are like my second family so yeah it's um, great to have you and I'm going to say a little prayer for you if that's all right and then we can get started well father God thank you so much for Robin thank you for um, her willingness to come and speak with us tonight and share uh, some of her testimony um, so we just pray that you will calm any nerves that she has um, and just speak through her what what you would like us to learn tonight um, we just pray that lives are touched and changed by the message you're going to share through her um, we just thank you for her heart for people and for wanting to help people get unstuck out of spiritually or emotionally um, challenging things in their lives so we just give you the honor and the glory for what you're doing in and through her and um, Thank you for her her heart to help. So we just give the rest of the night to you, and we give you the honor and the glory for everything you're going to do here tonight. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. A little fun fact before she sits down. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I was going to bring it up anyway. But Great. Yes, yeah, so my sister Dawn is, is one of her best friends, and she's nine years older than me. Oh, so, so I, have was, to bring uh, I was just a little girl when they were out going to the movies. So I would sit on my sister's bed, and they would all be putting their makeup on, and I'd be like, why can't I go yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I think you used to beg yeah, to did. go along. And, and we so, were like 16 and yeah, driving or right. anything. Yeah. So Kim <laughs> is a part of our family and always will be. So oh, well, thank you very yeah, much. And thank, you for, that. thank you for leading this oh, wonderful yeah, group pleasure. of ladies. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yep. So it's so good to be here and um, just speak to all of you just a little bit about myself before I go into my testimony. Um, I and have been married to my husband Roger for 28 years. We have three kids. Um, Taylor um, lives in Rhode Island with his wife Hannah. Uh, Travis lives with his wife um, Danielle and they live locally and then we have a 21 year old daughter that's still at home. Uh, we have a floor and tile business um, and we I'm a host and manage two Airbnbs. So I love that. 
One's in Florida, and where's my Florida girl here? And um, one's in the lower level of our home. So I really, really love hosting, getting to know people, even if it's messaging in Florida. And sometimes I get to see them, um, connect with them if, with the one here in Denver. So I've done book work pretty much all my uh, adult life. So I do it for businesses and uh, a local business. Um, favorite things I love to do is meet with women especially one-on-one -on -one or a few uh, women together because I feel like you put a cup of coffee or tea in your hand and everything feels comfortable. Um, so I love hearing about people's stories because we all have them, just like the song that we were listening to and that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love anything Florida and I love the big bright ball of yellow in the sky that we haven't been seeing lately. So, but when it's out, I usually am out as much as I can because I just love, I love being outdoors. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I've shared my testimony uh, several times before, but each time it's just kind of, you know, vulnerable and kind of scary, but um, I'm willing to do that. Um, just because it's important to, to share our story. Um, uh, several years ago, I was talking to uh, a couple and they were sharing that the one spouse was struggling with anxiety and depression and I just felt so much compassion on them and I said, I'm so sorry to hear that. I would love to share with you my story. And he looked at me and said, I would have never known. He said, you seem like you have it all together. And that wasn't a compliment to me. That was hard for me. I don't want to sound or feel or act like I have it all together. I don't want the mask on my face. I want it off. And so I have, um, I have a passion and desire for everyone to remove their masks so that we can see the real person because we all have beautiful faces and, and stories. And so that's why I went with the verse from 2 Corinthians 3, 18. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, which is spirit. And to me, that's what freedom is. So if I have a passion about people taking their masks off, then I need to take mine off. Um, a couple years ago, I had worked at Align Life Ministries for many years, and at one of our staff meetings, Deb Hinkle, which sat on the board at the time, was sharing, and she defined spiritual formation. She described it as, it's the process of being formed in the image of Christ for the sake of others. She went on to say that God's work is to renovate our hearts, but culture wants to mess with our minds. God doesn't expect perfect, he expects progress. So she also said spiritual formation is never private so that others can see Christ. I was very moved and motivated to experience spiritual formation for the sake of others. So here we go. Um, we all have valleys and I'm gonna talk about a valley um, I had um, in the years 2009, 10, and 11. Um, that's kind of the start of my anxiety. Um, several years before that, I had woken up um, with, and I couldn't breathe, and I'm thinking, what, what is going on? I didn't really know what it was. My daughter was starting first grade the next day, and it, I think it was just like everything's changing, and she was my youngest, and I realized I was having an anxiety attack, but that was the first ex exposure of it, and then I didn't have um, anything, issues until the year 2009. Um, so that's the area that I'm going to talk about. Um, I, um, yeah, because this is kind of the start of it. Um, in July of 2009, I had lost my dear friend Meg to cancer. I had been praying for her for an earthly healing for seven years. When she went to hospice, I knew that probably my earthly prayer uh, miracle was not going to happen. And I just couldn't sleep one night. And my friend actually happened to be up at the same time and and she messaged me and said hey if you want to go in the hospice i will take you in uh, so we did we drove in at midnight that night and uh, i went in to see meg and i touched her hand and told her that it's going to be okay and um, that i would now pray for her children 
um, Meg passed away 15 minutes once I left the room. I was the last visitor besides her family to see her. And that was a really defining moment for me. I was disappointed that God didn't answer my prayer like it's supposed to be my way, you know. And um, I was really low. And unfortunately, uh, the enemy, Satan, decided to use that against me mentally, spiritually, and physically. I then developed extreme anxiety. I started, um, after that, I started then with like a domino pain. I didn't know what it was. And so I was at the doctor many times for that. And then my anxiety. And um, I ended up having a, a stomach exploratory surgery. And they removed scar tissue that was actually causing the pain. But the recovery was long. I, it was months. I couldn't lift anything heavier than five pounds or um, it would just pull and I would start from day one over again. And so three kids' backpacks got me in trouble many times because they're heavy. And <laughs> I had three little kids at the time. And so um, my anxiety got really bad and um, I just couldn't seem to, to manage it. Um, and I started thinking maybe something else is wrong besides what I had done. I was just, I was worried, did I have cancer? Did I have a brain tumor? I was just, I was very, very irrational. And um, it just took everything I had to, to take care of kids and work and everything else. But God's grace is so sufficient. And um, the, one, the one day I stayed home from church and um, my sweet kids and husband went, and I just remember falling to the floor and just sobbing. And that's when I heard the most two beautiful words I had ever thought. And it was the first time I really heard the Lord in my thoughts. And he just said, trust me. And it was amazing um, to hear him like that. And um, what I didn't know was my, my husband and three kids were kneeling at, in, for prayer at church. And he had leaned over to our kids and said, please pray for mommy. And he's always, God's always present in our valleys, always. Um, my, my anxiety seemed to lift a bit, but then I started with really bad depression. I was um, three months out of my abdominal surgery, and I still couldn't lift anything heavy. Um, it was during that time that I developed a very bad sinus infection. Uh, fast forward three months later, and I went through four rounds of antibiotics, and I still had debilitating headaches. The kind you could barely function unless you would lay down, which you can hardly do when you have an active family. Um, I would put boiling hot washcloths on my forehead just to get two seconds of relief, and uh, it, it, it was awful. And um, that's when the um, ENT told me that I, I really do need to have sinus surgery to remove some infection. And then also I had a deviated septum that needed fixed. So I made that decision to have it yet another surgery. Um, and I did. And unfortunately, it didn't help. Um, the headaches continued to be bad. And I went back three months later. And he just kind of shrugged me off and said, it's probably just an inflamed nerve. like." get over it. Mm -hmm. So I went home and continu continued suffering with anxiety and depression like a lot and uh, many months went by um, and went back again and he said I'm fine like it's probably you probably need to see a neurologist and I'm thinking I just didn't have any peace about that and I went home and I sat on my couch and there was nobody home and it was quiet and I just sat there and I was just at my end of my room and all of a sudden, I had peace that I actually felt. It started from the bottom of my feet and went the whole way up through my head. And at that moment, I realized it wasn't, it was not that I needed to see a neurologist, but I had a sinus issue. And that gave me peace, even though I still had bad headaches. But it was my confirmation from the Lord that, no, just stay on track, Robin. You, 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 you know what you're doing. Um, so I was really discouraged and my husband just said, why don't, why don't you just get a second opinion? And so that's what I did. Nine months after my surgery, I went to someone else. And I remember going to the doctor and thinking, what if he tells me there's nothing I can do? And um, 
but that wasn't the case. Uh, he ordered another CAT scan, and there were many areas in my sinuses that needed um, to be dealt with, and he said I needed to fix my deviated septum again. Aww. And um, and I'm thinking that's not what I wanted to hear, and I said, do you really need to do that? Um, so I remember crying about it, crying because I didn't want surgery, crying because I was so angry at the first EMT that just kind of didn't care, um, but crying because I wasn't crazy. <laughs> there was something wrong with me. Um, so I was thankful for second opinions and doctors that listen. Like we all know there's some doctors that do and some doctors that don't, and he listened to me. So um, my, my surgery got scheduled and I was getting all ready for it. And three days before surgery, my phone rang and it was the nurse from the doctor's office and she said, Robin, I'm so sorry, but the insurance not covering it. Uh, she said the doctor even called, and they said, no, you have to go through another round of antibiotics. Oh. I got off the phone, and I went down to the floor again. You're seeing a pattern here, but I went down to the floor again and just started falling all over again. I called my husband, bawled to him. Then I got myself off that floor and picked up that antibiotic. <laughs> And um, five weeks later, I was back at the ENT, and uh, we scheduled it again. Then I was waiting six days for a very long, it felt like forever, but I was listening to a Beth Moore CD, and she said, have you ever witnessed the awesomeness of God? The sentence just finished, and the phone rang. And it was the doctor's <laughs> office saying, congratulations, Robin, you're having surgery. <laughs> I, I fell to the floor again, but this time I was just praising the Lord. I did see the awesomeness of God. And his timing is just beautiful. Um, so four weeks later, I was back in for my second sinus surgery. This the time this is different, though this time um, I didn't have the anxious moment. I was a complete, complete peace. And I'm just here to tell you, there's no reason I should have been in peace because I knew exactly what I was getting myself in for. And I was doing it again. Um, so the Lord gives you only the kind of peace that he can give you. It's so beautiful. And, um, yeah, so I had surgery, um, took care of the issues, um, but I wasn't a normal patient again. And uh, I had a very, very, very serious nosebleed uh, for hours. And my husband just uh, took me into Lancaster, and it was just a couple hours of, of it. And the doctor was very concerned, and he said, you got to do nothing for two weeks, like nothing. And I'm like, I have three kids, nothing, Robin. <laughs> so thanks to my mom and dad, I moved in with them with my three kids because my husband had to work. Um, and we stayed with them for two weeks and I did nothing. Um, but um, I did, I did recover and um, it, it did take a toll on me uh, physically, spiritually and emotionally. Um, but I did keep climbing, and I um, and it was successful. Even though I wasn't the typical patient for that, uh, within six months I was feeling better. And having three surgeries in 18 months was very hard on me, um, but I, I I survived it. Um, more hard came since there you since there's years of suffering. I I had shoulder surgery. A very family a very close family member to me struggles with chronic depression. That's hard. Um, and then in 2021, I lost my dad, and he was the rock of our family. Um, so that's been difficult to work through, but he is rejoicing with heaven and in heaven and drinking coffee, I'm sure. Um, and, um, and I realized that um, when you're pruned, um, when you go through difficult times, that's that's when you're closest to Jesus because you have nothing else. And I learned I can't rely on myself and um, that Jesus is my anchor. Um, I'd like to share some scriptures that mean a lot to me. Um, it's from the Passion Translation, but um, it's Hebrews 12, 5 to 8. And then I'm going to read um, 10b to 13. Fully embrace God's correction as part of your training, for he is doing what any loving father does for his children. 
For who has ever heard of a child who never had to be corrected? We all should welcome God's discipline as a validation of authentic sonship. For if we have never once endured his correction, it only proves we are strangers and not sons. And listen, <clears throat> oh, sorry, but God corrects us throughout our lives for our own good, giving us an invitation to share his holiness. Now all discipline seems to be painful at the time, yet later it will produce a transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who yield to it. So be made strong even in your weakness by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship and strengthen your weak knees. For as you keep walking forward on God's paths, all your stumbling ways will be divinely healed. So God allows hard stuff in our life, but those are the times we grow. Like, if everything goes our way all the time, do we rely on the Lord 100%? Sadly, I mean, I wish I could get it in my head, but... Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, uh, we shouldn't hide our struggles. We should um, tell people about them. So um, they can't pray for us if they don't know it. So we need to be sharing our stories. One of my pastors said in a sermon like years ago, but it's stuck with me, we are better together. So find someone safe to share with. Like um, we all have stuff. Like if, if they said... If they look like they have it together, they don't. They don't have it together. Um, and I would love to pray with any of you afterwards. Like, just tap me. It would be an honor to me to pray for you. Like, I love to pray with people. And, um, yeah, and God's continuing to refine me in, in that area. Um, do I still struggle with anxiety? I wish I could say I don't. Um, but I am still claiming that someday the Lord will completely heal me from that. Um, since 2009, I have lost two, another two very close friends to cancer. Um, my friend Sarah um, of June of 2015 and my friend Katie um, of May of 2022. And that was a hard journey for me to walk again because when I pray for people, I pray for people. And I have to also surrender, like Christina said earlier, like I have to also surrender that God is God mm -hmm. and I'm Robin. Um, so, um, I do recognize my anxiety triggers though. Um, when I feel my thoughts becoming irrational or I feel the tremors starting, I start speaking the name of Jesus over and over and over again. I mean, over and over again, loud, because the enemy needs to hear that I speak Jesus. I love Jesus. I trust Jesus. And I will say it over and over again. Uh, recently, I was sick. Uh, my, I'm still not completely 100%. Um, this is like week eight from viruses on top of viruses, and um, I was I started feeling the anxiety starting to to spiral. Um, partly because um, I was dealing with sinus stuff, and it just triggers from from 10 and 11, 2010 and 11. And the one night um, I was uh, driving, and it was dark, and um, I was just crying out to Jesus, like, I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. Like, please just help me. I trust you, Jesus. And I was making a turn, and all of a sudden, I saw this shooting star. I have never seen one. I'm 52, and I've never seen a shooting star. And it was huge. I was like, oh, my word. The word is with me always. And, and I love how he, like, talks us through nature and um that was so um monumental for me again like um he's always there and another thing um if any of you struggle with anxiety this is something i do um is i just start speaking things that i'm thankful for and the one night um i think i did it for a couple hours because i was really struggling that night um but what happened was um, my situation didn't change, but my anxiety turned to peace because my mind shifted. So it's like um, someone just told me recently, where there is where there is anxiety, there is no gratefulness. But when there's where there's gratefulness, there's no anxiety. So try it sometime. It works. Like 
Yeah, so just a just a tool that I um, started to do that I I love doing. Um, you're just you're not alone, and that's the enemy's tactic to all of us. The lie he loves to tell us, like nobody will get it, like get over it, like um, just yeah, it's just not not easy. Um, but um, I want to end with. Um, Another passage is um, Romans 5, 1 to 5. Um, this is from the NIV version. Um, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his, his grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. And I just had a picture, like, God's love being poured into our hearts, like, when you're like parched and you have that glass of water, you can't wait to just gulp it down because you know it's going to take, you know, quench your thirst. Like, just think about that. Like, God's love is pouring in our hearts. He wants the best for us. He loves us. He's there for us. And we are there for each other. We're His hands and feet. So please, please share with, uh, you know, anyone that you feel comfortable with sharing. Um, and I'm really thankful that you allowed me to be um, here tonight and transparent. Um, I don't have it to get all together, but I know who does, and it's Jesus. And um, I plan to follow him all the days of my life. And, um, yeah, so I just hope you feel Jesus in front of you, behind you, and beside you. So thank you. Robin. Yeah, and um, like I've always been saying, we need to share our stories because we all have one, like she said. Does anybody have any questions or comments, encouragement for Robin? Is there anything that stood out to you that was helpful? The anxiety. I have anxiety, and I, I deal with anxiety and panic attacks, and um, this the fact that you you know, just say in Jesus' name and different things he helps you with. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. It, and I'll start to do that. And the ladies at the house and I'm at the Potter's House of Ruth, they work with me very well with my anxiety and are always there praying with me. And, like, one one of them or a group of us. So it's it's very, very useful and very kind. Thank you. So you learned some tips? Yeah. yeah. Good. What is your name? Thank Rebecca. Rebecca, I'll be praying for you, Rebecca. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. Thank you just for being real. That, like, it speaks a lot. I appreciate it. your story is encouraging how you said that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can relate to you because I've had deviated since oh. I was 19, and oh. it didn't help for nothing. And I, <laughs> never, I never went back for <laughs> They said, oh, you know you have a crooked bone. You know, as I said, oh, I could have told you that. I can't breathe. But I let it, I let it go. Yeah, that's it's definitely not a nice start. No, it's not. Mind. It's not. And you have to breathe through your mouth. And I, I you know how many times I, I fell asleep? And I'm scared because I, I'd smothered because I, like, I couldn't breathe. And I, I'll never forget that. It was scary because I was all, my dad just dropped me off in Manhattan all along. I'm like, oh, my God. Why does I, I don't have anybody staying with me? I felt like a little kid, but I need, I wanted Aww. somebody to stay with me. Sure. I was yeah. afraid to sleep, but I wouldn't wake up. I, you know, because I'm used to breathing through my nose, and now, but now I, I, I breathe through my mouth, and mm-hmm. I got used to it. <laughs> I remember. But it's hard because I had severe anxiety. It just recently that I have it under control, but Thank I was God. I was a mess. I was afraid to eat. I, I couldn't sleep. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was shaking all the time. I was I was a mess. Like uh, back in June. I was like a walking dead. So did you get some tips from Robin? Yeah, I did. Okay, yes, I great. Did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens when we share our stories. Yes. Um, people can learn new tools to use with what they struggle with, right? 
I can understand not being an author because uh, almost three years ago, God healed me of 24 years of seizures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never gave up. I knew God was going to heal me, and I kept praying, and I never gave up. And I went to the service at Lighthouse where I go on Wednesday nights, and they had a speaker. And I went up, and I, I said, I want to be healed. And I, I would get them every day. They weren't like epileptic seizures, but they, when I would get them, they would last for hours, and I couldn't get up until I was done, because I couldn't walk or do anything. And she can tell you how, um, when I first started, it would be 30 to 60 a day. And I found out it was from a medicine. And, um, but I never gave up. I, I kept praying. <coughs> I got to, to the point where, you know, being a nurse, you're always searching the medical field, mm -hmm. you know, what could, what mm -hmm. is it, and this and that, and I got to the point where I said, no, mm -hmm. it's in God's hands, mm -hmm. and like you, you know, you, you just keep trying to live, you do the best you can, you serve the Lord, and I remember being one day no seizure, and I was like, two days. <laughs> I said, if I can make it to five days, if I can make it to five days. <laughs> and then when five days go, and it just, here's going to be three years. Wow. So wow. never, never give up. Whether wow. it's anxiety or whatever it is that you deal with, mm -hmm. never give up. So awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah, for sharing. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, and like Robin said, God's always with us, even when it doesn't feel like it yeah. or seem like it. And he's always working. He's always working in the background. You know, he hears our prayers even when it doesn't feel like he does. Um, but, and as far as praying for your friends who who died, actually they got the ultimate healing. You know, it might not be what we choose because we want them to still be here with us. But when a believer dies, they have the ultimate healing. And, you know, we can, you know, set our hope on that. So... Yeah. Um, well, she said a lot of things that I jotted down here. Anybody else have anything that really stuck out? I like the way you kept pressing on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hard to do. Yeah, when I came uh, from Puerto Rico to help the roof, I was having anxiety in Puerto Rico because I'm, not, I'm from Florida, and I was staying in Puerto Rico for two years with no apartment and everything. So then I came to the house of roof. Then I started having anxiety and panic attacks. Because I wanted to get out of there, and I never lived in nobody's house. Mm -hmm. Now, on the 21st of this month, the six months that I've been at the house of Ruth, and I feel like I'm at home now, oh, and I feel good. good. So my anxiety and my panic attack, they all stop. Oh, wow. I'm very grateful to be here. Mm -hmm. And to yeah. she helped me a lot with these <laughs> panic attacks. So yeah. I'm glad she, 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 she you know, keeps praying over her. everybody when we are, when we do have it. I think we did say last week about speaking the name of Jesus. I think Lynn mm -hmm. was yeah. talking about that. It's because it's powerful. His name has power. She and prayed all the time. Uh, my school's three o'clock in the morning. She was praying for me all the time. Mm -hmm. I had a you guys visited Lighthouse, didn't you? We did. Yeah. 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 Do you all have this, like the same pajamas or something? <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> <laughs> I remember oh, you yeah. guys. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, yeah, I remember you guys. Yeah, yeah. Cool to see you here. Yeah, there was a, a good group of you. Yeah, for Christmas, I think. Yeah, yep. this house of Ruth ladies, they get around. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you do. Um, I don't know. Anybody else? She said a lot of good things here. Uh, not God doesn't expect perfect, yeah. but progress. Yeah. I, I've heard that before. I yeah. like that. Ella May, did you want to say something? Or I had you did. Something. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I, I love the words that Jesus spoke to you when you were kneeling down, and the words were, trust me. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, your story didn't end there. It's not like you were healed of anxiety or healed of mm -hmm. what you were facing. Mm -hmm. And it's a good reminder that we can trust him even when things aren't going the way we think they should. Good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the whole praise, worship, mm -hmm. thankfulness, when you're not feeling it, yeah. is powerful. Because we talked before about the sacrifice of praise. Like scripture says, mm -hmm. the sacrifice of praise is so powerful because it's when we don't feel like praising, mm -hmm. but we do it anyway. Yeah. That's the sacrifice that God's looking for and that he loves. 
Um, it's hard to do, right? But it fills you with peace. Yeah. Um, That's when, one thing I didn't it. have in my testimony, but I love worship music, and there's mm -hmm. nothing that gets you out of like a swamp. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, the music we had tonight was so beautiful, Kim. Like, just like, how could you not be in a good mood? No. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And count your blessings. And that's, you know, yeah, that's exactly. um, the other yeah. thing. And the whole thing about being authentic mm -hmm. and letting people see who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that was a downfall in the church for so yes. long mm -hmm. is that we felt like we had to go put on our mm -hmm. game face, you know, like you said, a mask mm -hmm. and act like everything is okay. And it's not. Mm -hmm. So that's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you, you want to be careful who you're open with, who you're mm -hmm. vulnerable with. Um, but like she said, find a person or a couple people that you can trust and um, share your stuff because we're all in the same boat. You know, we're all sinners, you know, saved by grace. And mm -hmm. um, if we can tell our stories and help somebody else, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about, yeah. you know. It's encouraging that you pressed into God and you were going through that and you didn't turn to like pain medicine mm -hmm. to get through it and get addicted mm -hmm. just to get away from the pain mm -hmm. and go through that whole mm -hmm. mess. Like you really, really pressed, pressed into God mm -hmm. because you knew what his word said. Mm -hmm. And that's very encouraging. Thank you. There's so much more to my story, but another little story. I don't want to hold everybody up, but okay. there was one night that I was really, really low, and I actually felt like there was a battle in my head. Mm -hmm. um, the enemy was like, why are you serving him? He's not healing you. Mm -hmm. And he just kept pressing in and pressing in, and finally I just said, no matter what, I'm going to continue to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. and the battle was over. But he just, he gets you when you're low. That's yeah. where he wants you. And it's like, we just got to keep proclaiming Jesus. Yeah. 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 Don't give in. Don't we talk in. about his lies a lot here <laughs> when we're together because that's where he gets us, you know. His, his strategy doesn't change. No. Like it's, it's kind of boring. It's yeah, it's not my line. Yeah, we still fall for it. And like, why? Yeah. But, you know, and find some scripture, too. Yeah. Find some little mm -hmm. snippets that will come to your mind. Because one of my things is trust God and do good. Mm -hmm. And that's in Psalms somewhere. I forget. The, at, it's a couple places in the Bible. But trust God and do good. So if I'm feeling a little anxious, like sometimes at night when I'm trying to fall asleep, like all these things want to crowd in on you, I just lay there and say, trust God and do good. Trust God and do good until I fall asleep. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, if you just say the scripture over and over, um, he, he, he can't get in there. Exactly. You know. And mine is, may your unfailing love come to you, your salvation according to your promise. Then I will know how to answer the one who taunts me, for I trust in your word. That's, one, that's Psalms 119, 41, and 42. Then I will know how to answer the one who taunts me, because I trust in him. So I say that almost every day. Because it's like it's not. Well, and that's what he wants yeah. to do. He wants to taunt us. Yeah. He can't. He can't really bring us down. Yeah. Um, but he likes to get in there and make us miserable, basically. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, great. Anybody else? Anything, for Robin? Well, thanks again sure. uh, for sharing and being open and honest and thanks for being um, an easy crowd <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're pretty easy <laughs> so thanks again and i'm just gonna be a hug love you. you love you too and um yeah we'll be back uh next wednesday night um around 7 15 ish um you can join us in person or or join us on facebook so thanks for Thanks for coming, those who are here. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.